Sandy Richards, welcome. Before we get deep into things, I'm going to throw four letters out there and then each letter, you're just going to find a word to describe yourself. So, <laughs> so the first one is A. Adventurous. Okay, good. S? Um, uh, oh. um, can I put it in a sentence or? Uh, yeah, you can, you can. Um, uh, always smiling. Okay, smiling, good. T? Tenacious. Oh, wow, I like that. And the last one is F, because I actually spell fast. Fierce. Ah, I like that. I yeah. like that, Sandy. That's the, that's the yeah, I'm, I'm fierce. <laughs> and what I'm going to do, we are going to start off with fierce. Tell me why Sandy Richards is a fierce competitor. Well, um, first of all, when I get on the line, it's just me. And um, I'm fierce because no matter what you do in that race, I'm coming there to beat you. So that's being fierce. I don't care who you are. I'm just focused on me and I want to win. So I that's like a part of being fierce and, you know, a part of being determined as well. I like that. I like that, Sandy. So going back now, I want to go back a little bit in time. I want you to tell me about Sandy as a little girl. How did you get involved in track and field? Where did you went to primary or basic school? Just some general information about you as a little girl before you get to high school. Well, um, I'm from uh, Chapleton, Fort Pass. I was born and raised in um, Fort Pass. You know, you have uh, Maple in Fort Pass and you have Chapleton, Fort Pass. It's in Clarendon, right? Yes, that's it. I'm a Clarendonian child. Yeah, in the hills of Clarendon. A lot of good people come from Clarendon. <laughs> my, mother, my mother is from Clarendon. I don't know Clarendon, but my mother is from a place called Sanginetti or something like that. I've heard of, uh, but I've never been there. So okay. I was born and raised in um, Chapleton Ford, um, grew up in Sutton's dist mm -hmm. district. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, as us as Jamaican in school, we do a lot of, you know, sports day and stuff like that. So I start, um, you know, uh, participating in running in um, primary, not primary school, but basic school. And then we move from there to primary school and then Woodall College School. Um, Woodall College, that's where I pick it up a, a notch. I, and I, I wasn't running to say I want to go to the Olympic Games. I just run because I like it. And it gave me, um, running gave me self-esteem because I usually win those races. So people are like, oh, you're good, you know, you, you beat this guy, even boys. And, you know. So you would have competed at the JT, what to call it? The J, 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 T, A, or something like that competition. You mean J trees, you're talking? No, not the J trees. I think they call it the J, T, A, J, T, A, oh. parish championships. Oh. No, you bring in stuff up in me that I don't know. <laughs> well, JTA, really? Ah, yes. Mm. Yeah. All I know about is um, uh, all at school and high school okay. sports day. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We do sports day a lot. And um, usually we name the houses after famous people in Jamaica. So I, I'm not familiar with the JTA. It probably was there. It's been 37 years, so who knows? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, got yeah so that's how I started. You know, doing the um, crocus bag races and stuff like that. And in Jamaica, we do like uh, the egg in the spoon race and you run with that as a kid. It was pure fun. So um, I start getting a lot of attention that way. And I was, oh, this can, you know, do something for me and my self-esteem. So that's how I started, just pure fun and to get attention, actually, so <laughs> to be honest with you transition to high school you went to clarendon college right yes. you're a C you're a cc girl yes cc tell me about that transition. <laughs> so um it's funny i always tell my sisters that i have guardian angels right and ever since i was a child i mean i can remember eight years old i think i i know i have guardian angels so at woodall college school there was a um, a teacher, a PE teacher. He was a regular English teacher, but he's my PE teacher as well. And his name is Ju Mr. Junior, I used to call him. And um, 
he said, oh, Sandy, you can run. And then um, he asked someone from Clarendon College, was Mr. Green, this is this white guy from England who was the track coach there, brought him up there to watch me run. And that's how I ended up at Clarendon College. Okay, wow. Yes. So you actually, you got what we would call a buy into, into Clarendon College. There you go, that, yes, yes. That's what got me into Clarendon College. I was um, 12, 13 years old. Yeah, and that's how I got there. And then I started running. I was the only girl on the team that was running well. So I hang out with the boys a lot. And, you know, so the, the guy, you know, Clarendon College men, boys team was winning champs. So yeah. I want to, you know, I hang out with them a lot because I was the only girl that we didn't even have a relay per se. So. So were you always a quarter miler or you started out with the sprints like many and then you get to like, tell me about um, I, you know, okay, so back to I always want to win, <laughs> always win in the 400. So I thought, okay, this is my event. I could run the 800, I could run the 200. I even try long jump, you know, whatever they needed me to do, I was good at. But Very I did, yeah, I did not want to go around the track twice and I did not want to do long jump. So I was good at the 400. So I figured, okay, if I want to be good at one thing and win a lot of things, I have to I pick the one I enjoy the most. And that was the 400. So going to Girls Champs, Girls Champs was around back in that time. So you going to Girls Champs was never a problem to meet the team because you were like the top female at yeah. college at the time. Yeah, it wasn't a problem. I was always at Champs because I technically I was, maybe it's about four or five girls on the team. And I was the fastest one. So, it, you know, we didn't have a pro I didn't have a problem at all. And they take me in the 800, the 400, the 200, the relay, all of that. So I really didn't want to do that much event. So I remember my last year at Chance, they put me, I won the 400 in 30 minutes after I run the eight. So I just oh. threw myself in the bank. <laughs> That's tough. That's a tough yeah. double. That's a tough yeah, I couldn't, I mean, I didn't want to lose. I hate losing, so I know I wasn't going to win the eight because I was tired. I got to the 600 meter mark, and then that was it. I just decided I am not going to lose, so I just throw myself in the bank at the stadium. At least was, you, it's at still least, funny till this day. At least you give your your school um, some valid points winning. I mean, this we weren't going to win. We weren't, we weren't going to win champs. We weren't going to be in the top five. We weren't going to be in the top 10, maybe. Well, probably, possibly the top 10 because I won the 400. So, you know, that could put us in the top 10. But we weren't going to win. So, to you know, overwork myself for and no I'm reason glad, at all. And I'm glad you mentioned overwork because it has been an argument for some time now that the junior athletes, they are being overworked at champs. They are running multiple events. They're running 100, 200, some 400. Your thoughts on that? Do you think that athletes are actually being overworked? Is it possible? Yeah, I think so. I mean, but it, there's two ways around. There's two ways where, yes, they're overworked. And then the other end, is for points to get the glory, you know what I mean, of champs. But I, I feel if, if um, for example, if I send Richards is that chance and you don't see any way of winning champs, why would you put me in all those events for no reason at all? I already show my talent in the 400. I already showed my talent in the 200. So why put me in the 800? We are not gonna come in the top five. So that's where I think common sense should step in, you know, and, and because, after champs, we have other, we have 10 relays. There's we have the team, games. right? We have character games. We have, you know, possibly the world championships that year or the Olympics. And you're never too young to make a team for experience. And I'm glad you say that. I, I, I like how you're segueing because I remember Jacqueline Pusey, who I'll be interviewing yeah. next week. She made the Olympic team when she was 16. Yes, I, I was six in the Olymp at the Olympic uh, in, the, in the 400 at 16. And they didn't take me. I wow. was six. Yeah, um, was that was the 84 Olympics in Los Angeles. It was that competitive. Yes, I, but I was only 16. 
But the thing is, you could have taken me for the relay to get some experience. True, true. So, true. yeah. So there's a lot of little things, you know. There yes. is always politics as well. True. That is so true. Because even Veronica Campbell Brown, she made the Olympic team, the Sydney Olympic team, as a schoolgirl. And she ran on that four by one team. I remember I was there. Yes, yes, you were there. You ran uh -huh. in the 400 and you ran in the four by four. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're right. You know, if it doesn't matter how young the athletes are, once they're able to show their talent and they're able to get that mark, if there's a space, then you can um, take them along in. I'm not sure how many people they used to take for the relay when you were running, but no, they're taking up to six. Yes, it's always, uh, it was always six. Okay. Um, but if there's, if somebody think you, you're just going to go and not compete, then they probably leave you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we need as, you know, to start taking the young kids now, if they come, you know, for experience. Because I think if I had that experience in 84, probably would have done better in 88. In 88, I mean? right. right. Because you made your debut in 1988 at the Seoul Olympics. Yes, yes. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Yeah, 1988 Seoul. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, college. College. Star girl, college. You first. You went to. Is it San? How do you San Jacinto Junior College? Yes, and then you went on to one of the top universities. Yeah. Oh my God! Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> University of Texas. Yes, in Austin. Yes. Now the, the the um the Jamaican athletes. Well, Jamaica on a whole, we have a very good name at the University of Texas. Yes, we do. <laughs> Tell me about your experience. What was the transition like from running at high school in Jamaica, running at Champs, and mm -hmm. now moving to another level? What was that transition like? Well, what um, prepared me, I was 16 when I left Jamaica, 1986. Wow. I was only 16. Um, but what prepared me before that, I used to make the junior team. Okay. I used to travel as a junior. So mm -hmm. my my first character games was um, um Bahamas, Nassau Bahamas. So then you know Junior Pan Am, then the World um Junior Championships in Athens, <laughs> Greece. I was the only one that came back with a medal. So I was doing the junior thing before. So I was gaining experience from that. Well, um for my at leaving at 16, I met a coach in um called Terry Crawford. Her name is Terry Crawford. She's like my mom today. Mm -hmm. um, she was the head coach of the University of Tennessee at the time. Okay. Was, yes, and there was Jamaicans there as well. Yes. Gatcher, Gatcher, we, we, have a rich, we have a rich heritage there also. Yeah, yeah. and I met her at um, 15 in Florida at the Junior Panam Games. Well, Katya Ratri in, introduced me to her and she said, hey, you run well. I won the 400 and she kept an eye on me. So <laughs> it's funny, I was walking to the store for my mom in 1986, September. Um, um, yeah, before September, because school started in September. And I saw this car pull up beside me in Sutton's. And it was her and Mr. Mills in the car. And they came to offer me a full scholarship to the University of Texas. Wow. Yes. Beautiful. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, she didn't know where I was, so she knew Mr. Mills before. And she went to Kingston, flew in, went to Kingston, found him and have him find me in Clarendon. Mm -hmm. So um, my mom says no, of course, because I'm the oldest of seven. And she said no. And I said, yes, I'm going. I didn't know where I was going, but I'm going. And we kind of pressure him to sign in that letter of intent. So I, when time come and I didn't have an SAT score. Right. Um, there was a hurricane in 1986, so I couldn't get to Kingston to get my, you know, SAT. So that, okay. this is the reason why I went to San Jacinto Junior College first. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, and that offset the SAT score. Okay, good. Yeah. So I went and, whoa, that was it. And <laughs> it was fun. It was depressing. I, for the first two years, I was depressed. Because okay. I have no family. You from home and yes. homesick. Right. And I was young. Tell me, so. that. Tell me a little bit about that. How did you overcome? Well, I know where I was um, coming from, right? And I know 
I have, you know, my sisters, they're looking up to me because I'm the only one from the family that run, you know, mm -hmm. you know, on TV and stuff like that. Because we right, right. came from a poor family for, you know, you're, you're, your upbringing is your upbringing. We're Jamaican, so we, right. we make do with whatever we have, right? Oh, yes, so we do. It's we no do. problem to be, it's a problem to be poor, but it's not a problem to be poor. You know what I mean? Yes. It makes me stronger, for mm -hmm. sure. So I, I was determined to not quit. And I was determined to not lose my scholarship and go back home, because what would I go back home to? And what would I do if I go home? It's not like now, when you have athletes, you can stay and make it home. Because we figure out the formula, you know. So to yes, say, yes. We, we figure out the formula, even though we should let some athletes go to school if they want to. But that's mm -hmm. another story. Yes. Um. Yes. So yeah, I I was depressed. I wrote a letter home every single day of the week. Wow. Every day after I mail one, I mail the other. So I became friends with the lady in the post office. <laughs> and if I have no money, they'll mail a letter for me. So mm -hmm. you know, I found a way to survive. Yes, yes, yes. And then the second year, then me going to San, San Jacinto brought in Michelle Freeman and other Jamaicans. So I felt, you know, I had company now. So it was yes. a little bit better yes. you know, to hang out with my fellow Jamaican. Jamaican. But right. I was the first Jamaican there. Yeah. And oh. after that, I went over to UT. Beautiful. That's a, that's a beautiful story. And the thing is that um, sometimes we fans, on the outside, we have no idea what the athletes are going through. And sometimes when they don't perform up to our expectations, we we bash them and we say stuff. And oh, yeah. sometimes they're having challenges. How did you overcome that if you had any experience like that where maybe you were to perform at a certain level, you didn't? And, you know, how did you really get past stuff like that? Well, it it when um well we didn't have social media and stuff like that back in the day, so <laughs> that's a problem now. And yes. um, most of the athletes live on social media, so it affects them more. You know, um, I didn't care what people say because the most of the people that was um, that talk and said you should stop or you're not doing, they can't run. So I it, I didn't care. They can't even jog a lap. Yes, <laughs> and they don't know I'm surviving. So. I use that to fuel me to do better, but I stay away from, you know, negativity most of the time. Sometimes mm -hmm. you hear it and it affects you, but then you move on. Um, if, for example, I went to the stadium years ago and this lady says, Sandy Richards, and I'm like, I'm always saying hello, even mm -hmm. if I don't know who you are. And I didn't know her, remember her, stuff like that. And she cursed me out, but guess what I did? Wow. I cursed her back out, so that's wow. me. <laughs> you know, I move along. Yeah. Yeah, I said hello. Sometimes fans, sometimes fans can be tough. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. this is a discussion I try to have with my peers. You know, I let them know that, look, the athletes do have their struggles also. Mm -hmm. So we can sit behind a television screen and criticize them, but we don't know what they're going through on a given day. And I've always said to people, be kind with your words because now uh -huh. in the world of social media, they are seeing the comments because I did an interview with Aileen Bailey in February. That's my girl. Yeah. Yes. Very good girl, good people. Yeah. And Aileen said, we see the comments. We do see the comments. And mm -hmm. if, if we don't see the comments, people will call and say, yo, you see what I'm right about you? Mm -hmm. So we need to be a little kinder as fans and support more instead of hurting with our words. So I'm glad that you you touched on that. And it's not just athletes. It's, it's as a people in general, as a people, as a nation, right? We have to... And the reason why we have so much problems, you know, in this world is because we're not kind to each other. Mm -hmm. That's so true. not just athletes, just kind to your fellow person next to you, you know, no matter what they are, what, no matter what they look like, you know. Yes. So it's not just athletes, it's just people in general. You're totally, you are totally, totally right. And I totally agree with you. Uh, college. <laughs> College, I know, is tough, and oh. 
especially when you're going there in another country, because I study abroad, I study in the US, and let me tell you, it was also tough for me. I wasn't an athlete, so I did not have to be thinking about um, competition and keeping up my grades. How did you, what kind of system did you use to keep up your GPA in order to maintain your scholarship? To be honest with you, that was a struggle for me because, okay, so I grew up in a household that my mom don't know how to read and write, right? And my dad don't, so, and I'm the oldest. So when you have a, a mom and dad or an older sister or brother who can teach you how to apply things and who, you know, as because you start young to yeah. apply things mm -hmm. and how to read well and how to, have, you know, pay attention to your schoolwork, so to speak. So I didn't have that you know, well, this of seven. So it was a struggle for me all through school. I did not like school at all. <laughs> That's just, but I must say in the school system here, as in Hackley, you have the most support in the world. Yes, that's true. Um, that's true. Yes, that's true. you have the most support. And yeah. once, and worse, if you're a good athlete, they, they'll bend over backwards to make sure mm -hmm. that you're you getting those grades because they want you to perform. Yes. And, you're, and then you as an athlete, if you want the scholarship, you're going to, you know, do everything you can but it was really really challenging for me I go to study all every day I had to go to study all sometimes summer school because I have um, I have to take over a class or something of the sort and then you know when you're it doesn't come easy they give you tests it's like okay now I know I have attention deficit whatever the case may be they're yeah. like but yes. one thing with me I would I would I wasn't going to take any pills or anything like that so I struggled but I made it I wasn't right, which, which you couldn't. You you yeah. you you had to stay away from medication yeah. and those stuff because you want. Oh, they like to give those things to you. Yeah, this is America. The first thing they do is give you a pill, right? So. As, as, as an athlete, you had to be very careful because there were so many banned substances, mm -hmm. which we will talk about soon. But you had to be careful what you were taking because you did not want to return you know, mm -hmm. positive um, test. But before we get to that, what area of study did you venture into? Tell it me is, about that. Funny, I, I, I did sociology, right? Because I wanted to work with kids. I wow. wanted to, um, a friend of mine who went to the University of Texas with me, Carly Goodry, she was a, she's a US athlete as well. She did, I know that name. She did, Yes, that's my, that's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we did the same thing. So she was, uh, she's now working at um, Child Protective Services. You go into the home and take the kids out. You know, they call mm -hmm. in, you go. So that's what I wanted to do. And so happen I'm not doing anything like that right now. So, you know, everything just turned upside down again with angels, you know. So now I'm doing something totally different, which is rehabilitation for injured workers. Wow. 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 <laughs> you, you must love that. I love it. it. It's challenging because not everybody want to listen, but um, I love it. I mean, I've been doing it for 16, 17 years. Wow. So, yeah, and I've worked with mostly postal workers in state workers. So it's, we do 90, 95% Department of Labor. So that's what I've been doing for a long time now. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank so before we, I'm just going to back up a little bit before we get into your career now. Uh, your international career, you have a very decorated resume. You basically competed for Jamaica at all levels, the Olympics, multiple, triple times, <laughs> uh, the world championship four to five times, World yeah. indoors five times, CAC oh. Games, Commonwealth Games, the Carifta Games, yeah. World <laughs> Junior. Oh my God, I'm tying up my tongue. You yeah. have done a lot for Jamaica, Sandy Richards. You have done a lot. And I'm not sure how much people know that you have done for Jamaica, but you have done a lot. And as a track and field fanatic, I want to tell you thanks. I mean, I've watched you so many times. When you talk about dependable on a four by four team, give the button to Sandy Richards. I give it all I have when I, I get know. that button. 
I know. What was it like for you being on different teams, the World Championship team as opposed to the Olympic team? Well, um, okay, so I've been to five Olympics and eight wow. World Championships that I remember. Wow. Um, uh, whew, as you say, five or six indoors and Commonwealth, yeah. When you say that, I'm thinking, whoa, it's a lot. Yeah. It's, but it's I started a- young. Yes. You know? yes. <laughs> I started young, of course, and as I said, fierce and determined, right? So um, track is my life. Track and field is my life. And when you love something, it's like, I'm going to use another um, analogy, two analogies, uh, Merlin Ugly, right? Oh. She loves it. That's why yes. she run as long as she did. Yes. Um, I, and then I'm going to use another analogy, which is Tom, Bra- Tom Brady. I'm into football. So, you know, when you love something, it's hard to give up. So, I mean, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm going to stop you a little bit. I'm glad that you touch on Merlene Arty and Tom Brady. And I'm going to go back to sports fans again. Sometimes we are so... We are so savage with our words because I remember I used to hear people say, oh, Merlene reached a certain age now, she should <laughs> retire. I said, come on, this is something that she loved. And Merlene went to six Olympics yes. for, for Jamaica from 1980 to 2000. Yes. Right? And when Merlene switched and... Merlin switched because she wanted another Olympics under her belt. Well, that yeah. too, and, and just because That's one of things, yeah. Yeah, sometimes we get tired of treatments, you know, yeah. and she had Merlin had option. Yes. Right. Um, so she took the next option. She at the end of the day, you have to be happy within you, right? Yes, yeah. No one can make you happy. Not yeah. even your husband can make you happy. Happiness is within you. So um, she wasn't happy anymore competing for Jamaica and she yes. saw an opportunity. Yes, yes. I, I was one million percent behind her with that, you yeah. know, because I'm, I'm an athlete and I'm a person and I put myself where she was in a sense. With, and so without judgment, I'm like, yeah, good luck. Yeah. You know? plus, we, plus we did her, on, some Jamaicans did her unfairly at the Sydney Olympics. Yeah, but it, it's been going on for years. It's, it's, yeah. it's been going on for years. I mean, we went through the ringer sometimes with the, for example, the Federation and all that stuff. You yeah. know, um, it's, it's just something that happened a lot. And if you're on the outside looking in, you're, you're ready to judge. Yes, you read it as they cast a stone, yeah. so to speak. Uh, mm-hmm. and people like to judge, but at the end of the day, that's true. Most of the people who are judging Merlin is quite richer than most yes. of them. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. richer in, uh, in talent than money. I mean, she's good. I mean, yes. she I, is a queen. She is a yeah, she's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. Good, and I never understand why. As, again, judgment of people because you have nothing better to say or to do with your life. So yeah. those are the people you don't let affect you. It's hard not to say, don't let it affect you, but you know, you listen, you say what you have to say and you move on because you yeah. have no bearing in where I sleep tonight. Yes, that's I true. Tonight, that's true. Yeah, yeah we, we really need to be kinder with our words. Uh, the governing bodies, um, over the last 15 to 20 years, Jamaica have been doing well. I'm sure you've seen it. You've seen the clean sweeps at the Olympics. The, all of the Olympics, five Olympics we've had from the 21st century. And when you look at the women 100, Jamaica has won four out of the five Olympics. Two with Shelley and two with Elaine. The other one went to Europe. We yeah. have been dominant on the men's side. Usain Bolt won three consecutive, yeah. you know, Olympics. Your thoughts on, on being a trendsetter? Well, I, you know, it's funny. So if I'm not at the Olympics, I'm in here crying. It's weird. I cry, <laughs> and I'm I'm like I'm at work, and it's on. You know, everywhere I go, it's like I have this flag going. So I I'm just proud. I'm just proud to be a Jamaican when, you know, always, but worse when it's track and field time, you know, yes, whether yes. we win or lose, I just, I'm just proud to see the colors out there. Yes. Um, I... We, 
we were doing well before. Yes. We're just doing more awesome now. There you go. There you, you go. Know? Um, and I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad I'm, I'm greedy because I, I know we have more quarter milers in Jamaica. <laughs> oh my God. I was, I know we have more that can run 49 just, seconds. I was just going to touch on that, to ask you with the quarter milers. I know that we can find them. Sharika, young Sharika Jackson from Vera Technical. She has yeah. done well recently in the 400 where she won uh bronze at the world championships and she won bronze mm -hmm. at the olympic games of course we know what she did last year at the olympics yes. she's one of the, the many versatile athletes that we have your thoughts on quarter mile and the middle distance in jamaica right now i think well the 400 everybody think it's so challenging you know <laughs> it's a fear I think it's a fear that why we don't have more quarter mileage because, um, and for example, if they want to do just do the 100, you know, but nowadays you can run the one to one four. I mean, I wouldn't think Shelly can do the one to a four because of her, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the stat is short and, you right. know, you know, powerful right, like that. But I think, look at um, Shanique from the Bahamas. She won 10. And and it start back from the eight um the when I was running with Perec, Mary Jo Perec from, from France, France. One, yes. two, four, and it started yes. from my bestie, which yes. is which but, is Kathy Freeman. That's my bestie. So yes, I yes. I was going to ask you about Kathy because I remember Kathy. I think you were at her her wedding. She was in my wedding. She was also in your wedding. Yes, no, I, she was in mine. I couldn't get to her because my father died when was supposed to fly down and be in her wedding, but she came to Jamaica to mine. Oh, wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yes, I saw something like that. I actually thought it it was hers, but you are mentioning some outstanding quarter milers. Kathy Freeman, I mean, Sydney Olympics, <laughs> Perek was coming. I'm gonna have a Perek turn up at the Sydney Olympics. But didn't compete. But, but she left on the eve of the 400 meter because I wanted to see that race with her and Kathy Freeman, which never happened. Yeah. And you spoke about Shawnee Miller. There is um, Tanique Darling from the Bahamas. Yes, Tanique. And, and before that, we have Gwen Torrance who could do a 49 seconds and she could do. I didn't you know, know that Gwen yeah. ran Gwen ran 400. I didn't know that. Yeah, wow. 49. Wow. She could give that. you a 49 whenever you act, you know. Wow. So, thanks for telling you, me. If that. you want to go way back to us, Jamaican. Grace Jackson did it. Yes. She had the Jamaican record before Fenton. So but, but if you know that you mentioned going way back at the 1952 Olympics, Mr. Um Herb McKinley. He's, he's from, from Clarendon. He's from Clarendon. Oh, yeah. wow. wow. Clarendon <laughs> is, Clarendon has um, produced some outstanding athletes. Yeah. Whether they were born there or went to school there, they have really done some good stuff. Because 1952, he won the 4x4 four four gold. He came second in the 400 Jamaica yeah. run Quinella in that race, and he, yep. he also won a silver medal in the 100 meters. Yes, I, I, but, I know that history. And and if you if you want to bring up more athletes, um, usually when the U.S. athletes want to be decorated in all these gold medals, you have Flo Jo who did jump on the four by four. Marion, you know, I know what yes. happened, but she yes. jumped on it. You have Arina Privalova from Russia. They all jump oh. on the four by four. So. Yeah, you can versatility is good. Yes, it is. Yeah. It yeah. is. It is. And you're a part of a rich, rich legacy, Sandy. You're part of a legacy that is coming from 1948 because this rivalry with Jamaica and the US started from as far back as 1948. Talk to me a little bit about <laughs> your rivalry with the Americans. You know, it's funny that. I um, actually don't call it a rivalry. I call it um, good competition. True. You know, and it's not just the U.S. Because if you if you look in in a for example a four hundred meter field, 
you may have two U.S., but then it's lined up with a Jamaican, a Bahamian, from all over. So it's not just the U.S. Because yes. recently, after Sonia left, and Sonia is Jamaican, I'm claiming her. Yes. Um, <laughs> I agree. You know, that then it's not much, you know, to look forward to in the 400 from the U.S. So it's all a mixture. So it's not just the U.S. Everybody's seeing what actually Jamaica is doing. Small little countries seeing what Jamaica is bringing to the table. And they want to bring their, you know, their talent as well. Yes, yes. Because you have the Ivory Coast, you have Bahamas. Oh, yes. You, have, you know, all those little islands are coming up with one yes. and two people. They Trinidad, are... you know. Mm -hmm. they, they are okay. stepping up they are stepping up and yeah. we're running out of time and sandy i want us to do a part two because you have the information but in closing this session or this segment if you have one thing to say to our governing body of athletics in jamaica what would it be um, try to um, take care of the younger athletes, try to um, listen to them, try to go into these high schools, not, not um, making sure they can read, making sure they can write, making sure they have education that, you know, if they don't stay in Jamaica and perform well, they can take a scholarship somewhere to get an education. Make sure these kids know their schoolwork. It's there not happening. There you have it from Sandy Richards. A matter of fact, Angela Sandy Richards. There you go. One of Jamaica's top 400 meter runner. Sandy, thank you very much. My pleasure. And remember to stay on track, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Sandy, we need to have a part two. Let me know when and we'll pick it up again. Okay, thank you very much, Sandy Richard. Have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye.